the rambling wreck of Georgia Tech leading the way on homecoming weekend here at Bobby Dodd Stadium in Atlanta. It's Georgia Tech at two and five taking on the picture perfect six and zero oh, Florida State Seminoles. Hello everybody I'm Mark Jones alongside Rod Gilmore Quint Kesnick downstairs he'll be joining us in just a bit. Hey Florida State comes in here on the brink of history Rod looking for their 29th consecutive victory against a conference opponent not bad for a team that their coach says isn't even playing their best football. Yeah it's a young team and they're on a collision course with Clemson in the ACC right now you think about it and they've got Dalvin Cook who may be in line to compete with Leonard Fournette for the Heisman on the other side Georgia Tech you think about them they're a dangerous team and a desperate team dangerous because it's the option and you don't see a lot of that desperate because they've gone to a bowl game 18 straight years and that might be in jeopardy if they lose tonight. Yeah they finished up 11 and 3 last year and Dalvin Cook arguably one of the top two running backs at least statistically right now Rod yeah, if you haven't seen him play you've missed a treat yeah you know I get the Fournette stuff and the Heisman hasn't been given out yet this man does some things he might get to a thousand yards tonight he has 10 rushing touchdowns and average 41 yards on those touchdown runs and he leads the country in yards after contact at about four and a half yards per carry so he's a special player yeah all this for a guy that right now isn't even close to playing at 100 percent suffering with a hamstring injury right now that has been managed so far very well by that athletic training staff of the Seminoles Georgia Tech winning the toss deferring to the second half so Florida State will accept the opening kick Jalen Ramsey and Kermit Whitfield back deep for the Seminoles Whitfield remember mostly known for his 100 yard kickoff return against Auburn in the national title game in 2013 when they won it all this time through the back of the end zone and back out to the 25 yard line first down and 10 from there Everett Golson the starting quarterback for the Seminoles completing 67 percent of his passes on the season amazingly not the 11 touchdowns he's thrown but the fact folks look at the bottom line zero turnovers this from a guy that last year committed 22 while playing for Notre Dame Jonesy he has matured grown up gotten hugged up loved up <laughs> and he seems very comfortable in the Florida State uniform first and 10 from the 25 Cook right behind the quarterback and he takes the handoff on first and 10 and out past the 30 for a gain of about six on the play brought down by Jamal Golden leads the ACC in rushing second nationally as my partner said just a moment ago last time against Georgia Tech in the ACC title game last year he ran for one hundred and seventy seven yards so he doesn't mind seeing those Georgia Tech helmets on the other side with a bootleg action the pass complete and tackled immediately is Freddie Stevenson that's going to be a loss of a few yards. Sets up a third down and eight to go. Good pressure up front. Yeah, Jim. Good pressure, and that's that's the word on third down for Georgia Tech defensively. They like to bring pressure. Florida State is aware of it. They've got speedy receivers on the outside. They'll try and hit them if they get the pressure coming. Loss of four on the last play. Florida State is trying to shake the habit of slow starts especially in the first half Bolson completes it Cook made a nice shake took a little contact and stopped up boy really close to that first down marker he had to get to the 35 they're spotting it just short of that by a foot Griffin making the stop along with Gray good defensive stop for Georgia Tech and Jonesy you saw a little difference there with Golson a check down throw instead of forcing the ball down the field letting Cook do his thing and it almost worked out but a good tackle good stop by Georgia Tech defensively Jason Beatty coming into punt to Jamal Golden back there Beatty averaging forty two and a half yards per punt on the season in his own twenty five a high moonshot of a spiral all the way back at the 14 yard line and great coverage on the punt by the Seminoles a 51 yard punt nothing on the return and Gabbard making a great tackle downfield 
First down and 10 now for Georgia Tech. Led by quarterback Justin Thomas, who's completing just 44% of his passes on the season. He's thrown 10 touchdowns against four interceptions. And a little bit of a struggle for him in the offensive unit. In our first look at option football. Toss to Lance Davis. And Mikel Lance Davis brought down after a gain of a few. Got about six on the play. You mentioned Thomas as the guy who runs the option. I call him the magician. You never know where that football is going to be the way he handles it. Up at the line quickly on second and four. Of course, when you talk about option football, you talk about assignment football on the other side of the ledger defensively. The word eye discipline has been used a lot this week on the toss, and they limit that to little or no gain on the play. Isaiah Willis brought down. Third down coming up now for Georgia Tech. Well, that was the third part of the option. There is the initial one inside. Fullback Marshall doesn't get anywhere. Quarterback Thomas puts it on the outside. And good speed by Florida State. Chase that down. Well, Derek Hoskins making the tackle on the play. Third and three. Toss are going to get the first down. That's Clinton Lynch. Over the 200 yard mark now in the season with that carry. And first and 10 for Georgia Tech. Gain of eight on the play. Short gain by Thomas on the play of four. All right, thanks a lot for those of you who are watching Oklahoma and Texas Tech here in Atlanta. Zeros on the scoreboard. Georgia Tech with its first offensive possession of the ball game after a three and out by Florida State. Seminoles coming into this game with a record of six and zero, oh, looking for their 29th consecutive win against a conference opponent, Georgia Tech. Trying to snap that five game losing streak and well defended that time by Florida State and Roe Derek Hoskins making the stop on Mikel Lance Davis. As we take a look at our prominent storylines coming into this ballgame, Florida State at number nine overall, six and zero, oh, trying to shake those slow starts they've been having. But boy, you can't point the finger of fault. Dalvin Cook approaching 1,000 yards rushing on the season, second overall in the country. Georgia Tech. For a host of reasons, in the midst of a malaise right now on a five game losing streak. At times, their coach Paul Johnson says they haven't been able to get out of their own way. On the screen, batted up and intercepted. What a play by Josh Sweat. He tipped it, he caught it, he did it all. First and ten the other way for Florida State. Jonesy and his teammates call him a freak. He's a freshman. 6'5", 237 pounds. He's long and lean and athletic. Leads the team and pressures on the quarterback. And this is just another athletic play. Pops it in the air with his right hand and has the presence to find it and think about getting into the end zone. Man. Florida State with a lot of great athletes on defense. Do you take a shot here into the end zone on first and ten? Yeah, why Quick not? Strike. Why not? Let's go. Harper Colson, second series, hands it off to Dalvin Cook. That's as good as taking a shot. Cook, first and goal, Florida State from the three. That's about as good a shot as any, right? Yeah, tell me about it. He, <laughs> Cook is so explosive and quick. He gets to the edge in a hurry. So good block by the tackle, opening up a huge hole there, but he quickly gets in and out of that hole. A gain of 17. As he approaches 1,000 yards on the season, came in needing 45. Hook in the backfield beside the Notre Dame transfer, Everett Wilson. 
Cook again this time. Everybody keying on him and he stopped up about a yard short of the line of scrimmage. Freeman making the tackle no game. So second and goal coming up. Uh, down here Jonesy. Right, for those of you just joining us looking at second goal for the Seminoles after the interception. And a Dalvin Cook run. Zeros on the scoreboard. I'm Mark Jones alongside Rob Gilmore. Quinn Kessnick down in the field. Seminoles looking for their 29th consecutive win against conference opponents. Cook trying to score. They string it out nicely, and Cook put his hat down and got back to the line of scrimmage. Ruchungan making the stop that time. And it's third and goal. Uh, how about the Georgia Tech defense down here using their speed, bringing pressure? That's Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator, playing on those tendencies, knowing that Cook's going to get the ball down here. But now, Jonesy, with a third down here, you've got an athletic quarterback. Everett Golson can put pressure on a defense if you roll him out down here. And he's made a lot of right decisions this year, Rod. No turnovers against 11 touchdown passes. In comparison to the 22 we had last year at Notre Dame, a whistle. <laughs> and Jimbo Fisher literally ran out of the field. Charge coming out. To time out. He's down at the 20 yard line. <laughs> he sprinted out there from the coaching box. Wow. Well, I'm guessing that Jimbo Fisher's hamstring is okay, even if his star tailback, Dalvin Cooks, isn't the way that he sprinted onto that field. Third and goal. And Cook nursing that sore hammy, but. Quinn Kessenick, they've been managing it very well. Yeah, last three weeks, if you're following Florida State, Dalvin Cook has pulled up in the last three games with an injured left hamstring. It started against Wake Forest on a little pass to the flat. Again against Miami, and then last week twice against Louisville. They have really uh, rationed his time in practice. He only practices twice a week on Wednesdays and Thursdays. I'll tell you this, though. In the warm-ups today, he looks fast and symptom-free. Great job, Quint. He looked good on that first series as well. Third and goal. Bolson in the end zone. Caught. Out of bounds, though. Incomplete to Rudolph. Couldn't get a foot in bounds working against Step Durham. Two officials right on the spot there. Both said he was out of bounds. There's the ball. Left foot out. Looks like that right foot isn't down as his left foot is out of bounds very close there. Now from this angle does he have control. That ball moves up. I think that's a good call on the field. Yep. In comes Roberto Aguayo. 19 of 21 Florida State in the red zone. Aguayo this one from 20 yards out. And he gets it inside that right upright. Aguayo. 9 of 11 coming into the game. That's his 10th field goal of the year. The Seminoles on the board off that turnover. More from Atlanta when we come back. ESPN College Football brought to you by Scion. Premium standard features that actually come standard. Weird, right? And Verizon. Better matters. Gotta love college. Georgia Tech's mini five oh. race was a tradition that has been a central part of homecoming events since 69. The race derived from prank frats used in which pledges were forced to transport themselves around campus on uh, those great tricycles. <laughs> at, at least you got to trick oh, those tricycles man. out a little bit. Put, a bit, yeah. Put some rims on them. Look at some option football here. And getting a few yards out to the 32 this time is Isaiah Willis. Gain of seven on the play. Option football, the shell game. Fullback with the ball? Nope. Quarterback keeping it? Nope. Third option. Second down and three. Justin Thomas, the orchestrator of this triple option offense. 5'11 junior. Gave it, no, he didn't give it to the dive man. They gave it to Isaiah Willis. And he picks up the first down. Rod, eye discipline 
is a term we've heard a lot this week. Eye discipline, eye discipline. Well, you can't watch the ball. You got to watch who is the guy ultimately in your area. If you've got the fullback, go get the fullback. And that's what they did. Went and got the fullback. You get stuck looking at the football, you miss the right guy. First down and 10 after the nine yard gain. Thomas on the pitch. Tackle the 47 on Lynch. It's what's happening right now, Jonesy, is that Florida State has committed to taking away the first option. The B back, the full back inside. They are coming downhill fast, tackling him, making sure he doesn't get the ball. And Thomas is saying, fine, I got two more options. I can keep it or I can pitch it to the outside. That's why we're seeing the pitch man quite frequently here. Second and five coming up. Keeps it and pivots. A little backside pressure coming, and they make the tackle on him at the 47 yard line, right near the line of scrimmage. May have gained one on the play. That play is the changeup to the triple option. Triple option is the fastball. That counter is the changeup. So when they see the defense really jumping on the triple option, they come back with a little changeup counter, go the other way. Third and five. Marcus Marshall in the backfield had a big week last week on the pitch. Thomas finds his man for the first down. Out to the 40, it's Isaiah Willis. Well, Rod, you said it's pretty much like you can call three card Monty, you can call it a shell game. It's like, where is it? Where is the ball? Yeah. Under that one? No? There it is. <laughs> yeah, and the same thing with the option. Where's the ball? Fullback. Does he have it? Okay, I'm following the fullback. Oh, no, he doesn't have it. Quarterback, Scott. Let's get the quarterback. No. It's the third shell to the outside. And that's what's happening right now in Florida State. They're seeing this shell game. So that's why you uh, defensive backs break out in cold sweats when you're, <laughs> you're going to play an option team. A 14-yard game by Willis. First and 10 from the 40. This time, Justin Thomas got whacked by Demarcus Walker and a loss on the play of two as we go downstairs to Quint. Yeah, Paul Johnson felt that Florida State would try to take two defensive tackles and absorb both his guards and the center, allowing their Mike linebacker, 18, uh, Hoskins, to roam free. Hoskins on that prior play just missed the tackle. He took a bad angle. Yeah, Quint, he, he is a big time player for them. They have him covering the perimeter on each side. and. Georgia Tech wants to cut him off. From the vantage point of Hoskins, here's Marshall. Marshall had a big week last week, albeit in that loss against Pitt. He ran 10 times for 159 yards, got a few there. Well, here's Marshall in the middle of your screen. You see that they bring a, a lineman out to try and get him. He avoids that and makes a tackle on Marshall. That's the game, the cat and mouse game, the entire evening for him is avoiding those linemen and being in position to make tackles. Third and six, Rod, they've run it all seven times, all seven plays on this drive. And, and I think they should again. They are in two down territory. They can run it twice down here. They're not a great passing team. Yeah, Justin Thomas has completed just 44% of his passes on the season. And irate, perturbed head coach Paul Johnson going to make the call when we come back. Interesting chess match going on between Paul Johnson who calls the plays and Charles Kelly the defensive coordinator for Florida State and recently Johnson Had his quarterback Thomas looking over at him a little bit more made that change right well, Kelly worked for Johnson yeah. for a long time They know each other so Johnson knows Kelly knows his offense and Kelly knows that he knows he, he knows, knows his offense. He knows. he knows so you don't want to outthink <laughs> Yourself or something like that who knows <laughs> Third and six Backside heat, Thomas gonna throw it! And overshoots his man out of bounds, intended for Michael Summers. So it'll be fourth down coming up. See, I think that was an example of trying to outthink your old buddy. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, they met before the ball game, they have this history. Kelly says, 
he absolutely loves Johnson, that he meant everything to his career. But he says, I know him and I know his offense. And I think throwing that ball on third down was a product of that. I think otherwise you run it, you know, a couple times with your option and maybe you pick it up. But this is a long field goal attempt. Here. Yeah, but we're going to try this one, Rod, from 53 yards. That would tie his career long. With the snap down. And he knocks it through from 53. Harrison Butker, who was just four of seven on the season coming in, gives this team a little bit of a boost. And that's something that they really need, Rod, when you consider the fact that, yeah, they've lost five straight games, but they've been having a lot of near misses. And that time, the game of inches in their favor. The inches are everywhere. We got to make sure that you get some of them on your side and they just picked up a couple to tie this game up for you all but you're right the one game Georgia Tech was never in Clemson other than that they had a chance and Paul Johnson said this team could easily be five and two yeah, when you look at their losses and their opponents he was quick to point out that uh, at their two and five record their last six opponents are combined thirty three and four. So on homecoming weekend here at Georgia Tech. They cash in with a 53 yard field goal capping that nine play 39 yard drive. And this will come out to the 25 yard line. Well Monday Night Football on ESPN a shootout in the Arizona desert. Joe Flacco and the Ravens going up against NFC West leading Cardinals. Coverage begins with Monday Night the Countdown at six. Also streaming live on Watch ESPN. So first and 10 for Florida State from the 25 yard line and boy what a great story this year Everett Golson has been after all of his struggles last year at Notre Dame 22 turnovers 14 interceptions eight fumbles this year has not had one. Hey I've got a theory about that. Can't wait to hear it after this play first and 10. It's Dalvin Cook. And Cook stopped up for a gain of about two. So what's what's your theory on the turnovers or lack thereof? Well, I just think quarterbacks are a different breed. And it almost takes a quarterback to know a quarterback. Mm -hmm. And Jimbo Fisher was a quarterback. He's been an offensive coordinator his entire life and a head coach, still runs the offense. He's produced 10 draft picks at quarterback and four first round picks. He knows quarterbacks. He feels quarterbacks. Golson. Flag down. Golson completes it to Cook, who got rocked at the 30 23. Did he throw that left handed? I'm not sure. He got rid of it, though. That was pretty sweet. There's some pressure up front by Gotsis and Antonio Simmons. Here's the call. There are two fouls on the play. Offsides. Defense number 93. Holding offense number 74. Those penalties offset. Replay the down. So we're going to do this one over. Watch this. Are you kidding me? He threw that left handed. A spiral, too. Oh, man. <laughs> he didn't have time to find the laces or anything. <laughs> oh, that is steadily. He has been making great decisions, Rod, as you intimated a moment ago. Well, I, I agree. I just, I just think it, it, it takes a quarterback to understand. I think Fisher's a little bit of a quarterback whisperer. Yeah. You know, with all due respect to Brian Kelly, which means I can say anything I want. Right. Fisher is quick to point out that it's Golson that deserves all the credit. Taking a shot downfield, overshot his man who was open. That was Bobo Wilson. And Golson wishing he had that one back. Yeah, that's the matchup they wanted. They like single coverage against their receivers. They believe, Florida State does, that they have a huge speed advantage. And they just missed that one. Now Bobo Wilson had 24 catches coming into this game tonight. Third and long for Florida State. Wilson complete to the 41 yard line. He goes right back to Wilson who moves the chains on the 14 yard reception. 
He was working against Step Durham on the play. Young offensive line gave Golson plenty of time. He's got a great supporting cast around him. He no longer feels the pressure of having to make every play himself. That offensive line coming into the season only had five starts combined. Cook picks it up off the fumble. It's not the way they drew it up, folks. It's going to be a loss back to the 34-yard line. A little bit sloppy in their execution, resulting in a seven-yard loss. Well, Golson says it was a bad snap. He thought it was a little bit to the right that he wasn't expecting, like he was playing on moving to the left. When the play ended, he went to his center and said, hey, a little bit back to the, the middle a little bit more. That's, that's Hofield, number 59, who is playing with his right hand really taped, really wrapped up. And I wonder if that had a little impact on it. This offensive line had a lot of miscues last week in their win. Out of offside penalties. Wilson a little loose with that ball and sacked back at the 32 by Adam Gotsis. He's the guy who might be their most dynamic up front. 96 right there. An incredible athlete, just 6% body fat. And folks, he's been in the gym. <laughs> His third sack of the season. And a good way to punctuate the end of the first quarter for Georgia Tech. Under the lights here at Bobby Dodd Stadium in Atlanta. Georgia Tech. And we're knotted at three. Florida State coming in 6-0. and oh, Georgia Tech 2-5 and five, trying to snap that five-game losing streak. Florida State, as has been the custom too often for the head coach Jimbo Fisher, a little bit underwhelming in the first quarter. Colson back to pass. Down the middle of the field. Incomplete. Batted away by Jamal Golden at the very last moment possible. And it's fourth down coming up. Travis Rudolph was the intended receiver. Hey, partner, we've got homecoming, a whiteout. This crowd has been stirred up, and you know, you stir up a hornet's nest. Yeah. You, you never know who might get stung. I mean, absolutely. A little bit of a trap game with maybe Clemson looming out there a little bit for Florida uh, State. I, I would not put that past Florida State in this situation. Beatty with the punt. Directional kicks it down to the 16. Golden who just broke up that last pass. Brought down at the 24-yard line. Will it be first down and 10? 52-yard punt, nine on the return. Let's take a look at tonight's impact players. Brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Well, a couple of running backs. We talked about Cook all night, a guy who is firmly in the Heisman race, an outstanding player. Marshall, Marcus Marshall, on the other hand, his second start. True freshman had a huge game last week. Ten carries, 159 yards, and two touchdowns. He's in for Patrick Stowe, the transfer from Stanford, who's banged up. On the toss into the boundary, Clinton Lynch to so Brandon Harris, showing the ability to throw the ball a little bit. That makes them very lethal on an offense. Yep, he does. Second and five. With the pitch man again. And a first down as Clinton Lynch gives us some yards after contact. And a first and ten coming up. How's Georgia Tech winning the battle right now with the shell game, Rod, with this triple option? Well, I, I think Florida State's getting what they want. They're taking away the fullback, but Paul Johnson is so good at, at adjusting. They're really getting to the outside and getting the pitch involved right now. And he's waiting for Florida State to adjust to that so he can come back and hit him inside. First down and 10. And they give it to the dive man this time. That's Marcus Marshall. Johnson told us Marshall in our meetings he was looking for ways to try and get the ball to number 34 a little bit more frequently. The 5'10 freshman out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Coming off a big week, a lot more confidence, more emboldened after last week's game. A pickup of four. So they're looking over the sidelines. Marshall again. 
this time brought down to the 44 yard line picked up one on the plate Chris Kasher making the tackle. Hey Jonesy I want you to take a look at what Florida State is doing to try to deal with the option. That's Hoskins. He's the middle linebacker. He's about seven and a half yards deep. He's getting back there so he can read without getting caught up inside and he can avoid the linemen. He's getting to the perimeter to deal with the quarterback and the pitch man. He is a key to what Florida State's trying to do defensively. Already made a couple of plays. Georgia Tech has run 15 of the 18 plays they've had. Trey Clark winding down. Second. And they Georgia call timeout time before it expires. Georgia Tech. And we're going to take one with them. Full timeout. Back with more after this. Well, tonight at 10.30 on ESPN, we've got Washington at number 10, Stanford, in a Pac-12 tilt. Kevin Hogan and Christian McCaffrey lead the Cardinal against the Huskies in Stanford. Hey, McCaffrey really tore up from the floor up on UCLA last week. Well, he, he 243 put himself, yards. Yeah, he put himself firmly in the Heisman race. Crazy speed. Third and five here for Georgia Tech. See what they do coming out of that timeout a moment ago. There seems to be some confusion. Four on the play clock. They go to pass. And that's picked off. That play imploded from the beginning. Brutus with the pick. High stepping it down the sideline. Touchdown, Knowles. Oh, they're going to mark it at the two. The official put his hand up on the near side. And that never looked good for Georgia Tech right from the opening of that play. You know, Jonesy, you're right. I think coming out of that timeout, they were completely confused. Take a look. There's one player who has no idea what he's doing. He just stands still. This ball was also thrown by Thomas, completely off his back foot. Had no shot at it. Brutus was right there reading it the entire way. That play never had a chance. And here's one more look as he tiptoed down the sideline. Yeah, he yeah, clearly stepped foot. out of bounds. Yep, left foot was out at about the two. Yeah, one of the officials on the near side of the field seemed to indicate touchdown. First and goal from the two yard line. The second turnover of the night caused by that Seminole defense. Maven Saunders, the big tight end, has checked into the ball game. He's a huge target at 6 5. They give it to Cook, and Cook tiptoes between the tackles for a touchdown. The nimble footed tailback puts the first touchdown on the board of the night. And that's his 11th one of the season. He's six feet tall, about 208 pounds, 206 pounds. And he can find his way delicately in and out of a hole. He can run by you. He can run over you. He is the number two rusher in the country behind Leonard Fournette. Dalvin Cook just starting to get warmed up. And it's like my dad used to say, you can't cook with cold grease. And he's hot, folks. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Dr. Pepper and College Football. It's a one-of-a-kind tradition. And Buick, proud partner of the NCAA. Well, the Georgia Tech whistle is a steam whistle near the Tech Tower dating back to the 1890s. Blowing of the whistle occurs five minutes before every hour and after touchdowns during home games. So uh, hmm. the hope is that our guy there, Miguel Zarate, in the tower is uh, pulling on that whistle and making that thing nope. make some noise. No whistles on field goals? No. Huh. TDs only. This one out the back of the end zone. Uh, Chad Kelly throwing over the middle. You know what we say about the middle. The middle is filled with Darkness and fear, <laughs> something like that. You know, you're it's gonna dark you're gonna, and full of terror. You're, you're gonna you're gonna <laughs> guilt me into buying the DVDs of uh, of that series, man. <laughs> Game of Thrones. <laughs> gonna have to download it after the game tonight. First and up. ten. More option. They give it to the dive man, Marcus Marshall. You get the feeling. Marshall carries the ball. Rod, that 
statistically I mean Georgia Tech has been able to move the ball pretty well on the ground but not quite reflected on the scoreboard uh, 10 points off turnovers two picks and you mentioned at the top 44 percent passing percentage for Georgia Tech and those third down situations have not been good they've got to stay out of the long passing situations second and seven you saw head coach Paul Johnson there he was telling us earlier that at times we've been our own worst enemy. They've had a host of injuries that haven't helped either. Thomas, though, putting the hurt on Florida State and running for the first down. You know, Jonesy, you, you can't make tackles when you're on the ground. And Georgia Tech, like any option team, they do a lot of cut blocking. They dive at your knees and they get you on the ground. And it happened on that last play. Florida State, they've got to use their hands and avoid being cut blocked. First and ten, Thomas looking over at Johnson on the sidelines. Gives it to the pitch man, but well diagnosed on defense by Reggie Northrup. Makes the tackle on Lance Davis, no gain. Downstairs to Quint. Jonesy, that is legal cut blocking. And the two areas, if you're a fan at home where you want to watch, on the back side of each play, so let's say that last play, Thomas pitched it to his right. The left side of the line will scoop out. They'll cut block the guard and the tackle, Florida State's defensive lineman. And Rod mentioned on the perimeter, that's where it's most unique, especially uh, where they bring that A back on his long arc. And they like to, to cut out in the perimeter, which is very difficult for corners and safeties. You said it, it's a little bit unique to Georgia Tech at times. Thomas falls down right near the line of scrimmage no gain. Well Quint knows that's why I hate the option. I mean some of my worst days in college. How bad was it oh, really. God, I, How bad was it. Hated it. And just just watch this. There is a dive cut block. You get one guy down. Got others on the other side trying perfectly to get perfectly legal down. though right. Perfectly like, legal. Just a pain to deal with. You're worried about your knees. You're worried about injuries. All that kind of stuff. It makes you take your eyes away from what you're supposed to do, and you're looking down at the guy to try to keep him off your knees. I still see Oklahoma and <laughs> Thomas Lott and Billy Sims and David Overstreet. <sighs> As if you didn't have those guys to worry about, too. Right? Army did it to us, too, man. On third and ten, they're going to try and throw it here. Thomas slinging. His receiver coming back to make the catch, but it's out of bounds, incomplete. Ricky June juggled it. Yeah, and he was working against arguably the best corner in college football. Jalen Ramsey all over that, and you see the juggle, no possession until he's out of bounds. That's a good call, and that's good competition by Ramsey. And we've seen some good corners. I mean, I like Hargraves over at Florida, but I think the scouts are going to like him better because he is a big corner. 6'1", 200 pounds. You don't find a lot of guys like that. And not only that, but Ramsey... Got a whistle down to the field. Ramsey right there talked about his athletic gifts. Also a 27 foot long jumper. What? So, yeah. I don't want my track and field friends to get mad at me by saying he's a world class long jumper. But 27 feet that qualifies. Huh. You know Doc Patton got on me last week when I said a guy had world class speed. This is world class long jumping and world class deep being as yeah, well. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know about that long jump stuff, but I know a corner who can close and he can close and he knows how to finish. He gets his hand in there to make a play. He's got those long arms. When you find a, a corner who's 6'1", that fast, that explosive, you can line him up against the big old wide receivers they have up in that other league. Yeah. And Ramsey a little bit more of a leader now with Hunter and Marshall both out with injuries. Trey Marshall out for the rest of the year with the torn biceps. Here's the call. You know Jonesy before the game we were down on the field. Quint's been down there. Quint's been hanging out with some of the seven scouts who are here to see players like Ramsey or I guess there are a few other Florida State yeah. players you could scout tonight. I got a bunch of guys. Bobo Wilson back with his punt. And Ryan Rodwell. Wilson breaks one tackle then got hit and brought down at the 24. It'll be first and 10 from there after the 39 yard punt. Everett Golson trying to make things happen when we come back. 
Get ready for NFL Sunday. First, it's NFL Insider Sunday Edition with the latest news and breaking stories at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Then at 11, it's Sunday NFL Countdown with Boomer and the gang right up to kickoff. It all starts Sunday at 10 a.m. on ESPN. First down and 10 for the Seminoles. I'm Mark Jones chopping it up here in Atlanta with Rodney Gilmore and Quint Kessenick. Alvin Cook still trying to get that motor running. 28 yards rushing so far. Olsen off the play fake. Complete through a dart to Kermit Whitfield, who's having an outstanding year, especially in the last two games for the Seminoles. Well, he's no longer just a kick returner. Once again, you see the great protection that young offensive line gives Golson and just a dart to Whitfield, who had, what, a big game last week with nine catches. The week before that, another nine catches. He's really come on. First down and 10. Alvin Cook hits the edge, cuts it up. And Cook with a nice first down run to the 43-yard line. Got a nice block up front by Hofeld as we go down to Quint. And Jimbo Fisher really felt he could have success running behind his big left tackle, Roderick Johnson. 6'7", 323, he's only a sophomore. He's got about a half a foot and 83 pounds advantage on the smallish Georgia Tech defensive end. And that's the first time we've seen Cook be able to bounce one to the outside. Yeah, when you're calling an opponent small and he's 250, that's an advantage. Here's Cook with a sweet cutback. And Cook's forward progress. Puts Florida State right on the edge of field goal range. You know, Jones DQ makes a good point about that matchup. Keyshawn Freeman, who was facing Johnson over there, is 6'1 and about 235, 240 pounds. And he's going up against that monster of a man. <laughs> That's not a lot of fun. So you expect Florida State to keep pounding over there. Georgia Tech is trying to help Freeman by bringing in some linebackers, bringing in the safety to kind of shore up that edge. Second and six, Florida State lining up out of the eye. They toss it to Cook. That turbo kicks in, and Cook with a nice gain to the 28-yard line. He's just gone over 1,000 yards rushing for the season on that run and over 2,000 yards in his career. All this from a guy that, from very humble beginnings, you know, a big five-star recruit from Miami Central High School in Miami, Florida, a former teammate of... Uh, Joe Yerby, who's at the University of Miami right now, the two of them played together. Boy, what a backfield that was. Yeah, right? and Miami couldn't get him, huh? Mm. He was highly recruited, initially committed to the University of Florida. And Cook getting another opportunity here. A flag down on the play. I think we got a hold over there, right in front of the official, reaching a grab. Holding. Offense, number 81. 10 yard penalty. First down. That's against Ryan Izzo, the tight end. Yeah, he had the misfortune of being right in front of the official <laughs> and right in front of Cook. No way that was going to be missed. He just reached out, reached out to touch someone. Got that flag thrown. Jimbo Fisher's team trying to rid itself of some of the inconsistencies they've had of late. And interesting, he was telling us that his quarterback, Bolson, now has probably about 30% more offense to work with than he did at the start of the season. So his playbook expanding. What a great pass complete to Rudolph for the first down. Everett Bolson took a shot too. He's still on his backside at the 44 yard line. They pick up 20 yards on the pass. Well people said he could not hang in the pocket and deliver the ball. Mm. That was one of the criticisms at Notre Dame. He is showing himself to be a pocket passer tonight. The courage hanging in there delivering that one when he takes a shot. Rod, we talked about it a little bit earlier yesterday. Jimbo Fisher seems to be in a nice vibe with goals and his quarterback as we have an injured tech player down in the field. It's number eight, Step Durham. So as the athletic trainers tend to him, you know, you, th you think about uh, how Fisher had his quarterback Golson come in late because yeah. he didn't get in until June. But boy the work that he's done with him in that short period of time really paying dividends here. Yeah, as you take a look here he's up on his feet now. I think he just kind of tweaked something. No nope, no contact. It's like he's grabbing the left hip or so with Wilson by him. But yeah back to back to your point. I, I think you're absolutely right. He came in in June 
And again, with all due respect to Brian Kelly, Brian Kelly was a linebacker, defensive coordinator, and quarterbacks are different. And I, and I just think that Fisher gets quarterbacks. He's had so much experience with them, four first-round picks, 10 draft picks overall. He knows when to push a quarterback, how to gain their trust, how to gain their confidence, and all that. There you see what he's done. That's a pretty good resume yeah. for saying, I know how to deal yeah. with quarterbacks. He says that he thinks Golson will have a chance to play on Sundays. And so will this guy, Dalvin Cook. Cook stopped up at the 11 yard line gain of three more on Golson down to Quint. Yeah you can see the connection between the quarterback and the head coach Jimbo Fisher the body language and now they're speaking the same language as you guys said he showed up in June. What I'm seeing tonight is better intermediate throws where he's really been able to step in and drive those throws and he's starting to understand the body language of his receivers where they want it what the timing's going to be a uh, dramatic improvement over the first six games. Not to mention a lot of buy-in from Golson. Maybe that wasn't there when he was at Notre Dame. On second and seven. He's got number four back there. The Cook stopped up for a gain of one yard by Jamal Golden, the starting strong safety who makes the tackle on the play. You know, when your star player is really humble like Dalvin Cook, it really helps the team. And his humble beginnings go back to the days when he would come home from school and as a youth, nine, ten years old, run down 95th Street and 27th Avenue to the car wash where his dad used to work and put in a shift of work with his father. Now, I kind of wish he were putting in a shift of work right now on third down in the in the red zone here, but he's he's on the sideline. Yeah, I, I'd call a timeout because I'd like Cook to be on the field. That hamstring, which Quint reported on. Using that special system to keep track of the load is holding up so far. Back after this. 10 to 3 ball game, a little over four and a half to go. And moments before that timeout was called, this was the scene. Like you said, Jimbo wanted his guy out there, right? Third down and six in the red zone. I don't want Cook coming off the field, neither did Jimbo. He's like, hey, you stay out there. We need you out there on the field. That wasn't working. They went to the timeout. 4.28 to go. Third and six. They've got to get to the four for the first down. Cook to the left of Golson. Over the middle, incomplete. And behind his intended receiver, Bobo Wilson. So fourth down coming up, and Aguayo is going to come in. Yeah, I think he missed that one. I think Golson had Cook in the flat. And give it to him on, in a one on one situation and let him see what he can. And I think that's what Jimbo is saying to him. Hey, just watch the upper left of your screen. Look at number four. Wide open. Just give him the ball and let him do his thing. A lot of green, maybe one or two defenders he'd have to deal with, but that, that was the throw. Look at Aguayo on field goals of 40 yards or less. Tonight already made one from 20 yards out. This one coming from 27. And he knocks it through Florida State up 16 13 to 3 when we come back Monday Night Football on ESPN a shootout in the Arizona desert folks Joe Flacco and the Ravens going up against NFC West leading Arizona Cardinals the coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6 also streaming live on watch ESPN the lights here at Bobby Dodd Stadium Georgia Tech this stadium wedged in the middle of downtown Atlanta great it's atmosphere cool. it's yeah. very cool yeah you kind of wonder could they have shoehorned this thing in there or did they build everything around it homecoming weekend right now Georgia Tech down 13 3 Lance Davis on the return but there's a flag down back at the 11 yard line Lance Davis out near midfield at the 49 let's wait and see what this flag is all about. A 37 yard return but will it stand. Our officials microphone obviously not working but the indication that that is coming back. Four oh eight to go in the first half. You know in fairness to Georgia Tech when you start chronicling their struggles you have to mention the fact that they've had seven 
different players on offense injured four different backs included. So attrition has been a big factor in their disappointing season so far. First and ten fumble by Thomas. Hits the pitch man maybe a bad decision. Florida had that well read Derwin James accounting for the loss back at the three yard line brings down Willis that was perfectly read by the Florida State defense and helped by the fact that that ball was on the ground. Look at that hit. I mean James the freshman recruit a big time recruit was all over that. He's a second rated free safety when he came out of high school joined the team in the spring and has solidified himself as a starter with some of the injuries that they've had in the secondary. Uh, one of those good looking guys back there Rod 6'3 212 pounds. On second and 12. Thomas. Eluding harm and making the throw down to the 35 to Ricky June. Jones yet I think that's his second completed pass which means he now has as many completions as picks for the night. But the presence here by Thomas to recognize he didn't have a whole lot of time to get that thing out of there but he did. Just uh, inches away from giving up that safety a 32 yard pickup. On a catch by June. First and 10 they give it to Marshall. Marcus Marshall and he comes down to the 40 yard line a gain of four on the play. Georgia Tech and Florida State each with a timeout remaining. Georgia Tech at least hoping to get into field goal range here. Thomas keeps it. Breaks a tackle on the loose. Justin Thomas. Just in time. Touchdown. A 60 yard burst into the end zone. Watch Ramsey, number eight from the backside, who runs him down but can't hang on. And then he's into the open after having a couple of good blocks on the outside. Nobody can catch Thomas. We got ourselves a ball game. Boy. Flag down on the play. And boy, what a big break and a big play for Georgia Tech. With time winding down here in the first half. The officials microphone still malfunctioning. Yeah. Illegal substitution. Yeah. By Florida State that was the signal for the infraction. And I believe that's just the second rushing touchdown that. Florida State has surrendered Correct. all year long Rod and Correct. the first one for over 30 yards allowed for them this season. So a night of firsts. 222 to go. Justin Thomas making things interesting. You're watching the ACC on ESPN on homecoming weekend here. And Atlanta Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech coming in at two and five overall 0 and four in conference play you know after the loss against North Carolina. Justin Thomas right there. His coach gassing him up on the sidelines. Thomas was in the dumps after that North Carolina loss when he fumbled at a critical time. But he has since bounced back. Meanwhile Jalen Ramsey. On double duty here, where's number eight when he's their starting cornerback? And then on kickoff return jersey, jumps into the phone booth. Well, not quite a phone booth, Rod, but you know. <laughs> remember, he, he missed that tackle, and now he's back out on the field, almost uh, with a chance to return. All right, first and ten for the Seminoles from their own 25 yard line. It's first and ten for the State ball on the 22 to go in the first half. Seminoles. Accustomed to playing in close games, especially early. They haven't really blown any of their conference opponents out yet. 
out to the 27 yard line. What, Mark Rod, what do you make of Florida State in terms of the college football playoff in one of those top four slots as November 3rd, the date of the first college football playoff rankings coming up? Well, I think they're staring at a showdown with Clemson, assuming they get by Georgia Tech tonight. Mm -hmm. And I think the winner of the ACC, if they're undefeated, will be in the playoff. I think if you're a one loss team out of the ACC, mm -hmm. it gets shaky. You're probably going to be left out. Second and nine. Olsen with a completion. This is Whitfield. Whitfield with that big speed. Picks up a few more. You know, and, and when we talk about the playoff, we're, we're making assumptions way down the road. I mean, we're thinking maybe the Big 12 has an undefeated team. Right. But if the Big 12 has a one-loss champ, the Big 12 is on the bubble. I, I think I think the Why SEC, yeah. well, because of the weak schedules. Right. If you don't have to play a tough schedule, the committee is going to get that, give you that side look like, hey, why, why should we put you in the 14 playoff? After the nine-yard game, first down and 10. Wilson. Finally decides to take off and pushed out of bounds at the 37. Golson came into the game tonight with 188 consecutive pass attempts without an interception. That streak still alive. He picks up two on that run with 131 to go in the half. Georgia Tech has really done a good job defensively of limiting the big plays by the Florida State offense. Florida State's receivers have not been able to get behind defensive backs they expected to be able to do that with their speed still a young Florida State team but sometimes when you're young you're really talented like that guy Dalvin Cook for the first down into Georgia Tech territory just shy of the 44. Dalvin, Dalvin Cook had a chance to speak recently with former Miami Central grad and current Atlanta Falcon Devontae Freeman former high school teammates at Miami Central. A pass caught at the 32. Boy, Travis Rudolph took that off his shoe tops of his Nikes. Well, Golson was <laughs> under pressure and just had to get rid of it. And Rudolph made a circus catch. I mean, tremendous catch to pull that one up. Got to take another look at this, Rod. Behind him and low. Could have been an infielder. <laughs> 14 yard game. Quickly down to the 31. Pass complete and a nice open field tackle on Kermit Whitfield at the 27 yard line, limiting that game to four. Good tackle by Lawrence Austin. Clock management right now. You've got a timeout. You're in field goal range. Clock management is critical. Olsen completes the pass to the 21 to Irmo Lane. Just shy of that first down. It looks like uh, he's close to it. Oh, yeah. They're, They're going to give it to him. They're yeah. going to give it to him. Yeah. Now the, the, 21. Clock, the clock is going to start once they mark this. I think you want to take a shot here because you don't want to just spike it now. You could, but you got one timeout. You got a chance for a couple of plays. They're going to throw it. Golson burning time on the clock, and there's that left handed pass. This time incomplete. That, that, that Lane, the closest you. one. That's not good clock management. Remember, they had a timeout. They had enough time to get a couple of plays in. Now we've seen the left-handed throw earlier. He gets this out of bounds. Second down and ten. Ball on the but but you're in a tough spot. You you just lost 12 or 13 mm -hmm. seconds. I don't think you can run another play. I yeah. think you got to kick it here. And in comes Aguayo downstairs to Quint first. Jimbo Fisher calling timeout there to get his field goal team organized. Aguayo, if you follow college football, you know how accurate this young man is. Watching him in warm-ups, the distance here is, is of no concern. He, he was good in warm-ups from 52. The coach has seen him hit for more than 60 in practice in the spring game. I did see him, however, push two to the right from 50 in warm-ups to see if he can straighten that out. No wind, ideal conditions tonight for uh, a guy who may be America's best kicker. Yeah, good point, and uh, Aguayo, can attempt this one from about 38. But uh, Golson's indecision may have cost them an extra play. Jimbo Fisher had some very animated conversations with Jameis Winston last year. I mean, animated, folks. If you saw them, they were 
very, very uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, pointed. Sometimes uncomfortable. <laughs> yes, for viewers. And Bolson starting to get some of those now too from 38 yards out. Aguayo, cash money, and Florida State leading 16 to 10 after the first two quarters of play. Bolson speaking with the staff. Stay tuned for our Outback Steakhouse halftime report when Quint will have Coach Fisher right now. Let's go back to the studio. You're watching the ACC on ESPN here at Bobby Dodd Stadium in Atlanta. Homecoming weekend here at Georgia Tech as they try to snap their five game losing streak, but a daunting task in facing number nine, Florida State, who lead 16 to 10. I'm Mark Jones alongside Rod Gilmore. Quinn Kesnick down on the field. We'll be hearing from him in just a bit. Florida State's bell cow all season long has been their star tailback. Dalvin Cook, number two in the nation in rushing, coming in. But Rod, so far, very uh, a pedestrian 63 yards rushing. Yeah, you know, not unusual for Florida State. They've struggled in the first half of ball games. He only had 63 yards, only 63. But Georgia Tech did a good job of limiting big plays. There were only three big plays for Florida State. You know, they did a nice job except for the points off turnover. That really hurt them. Two turnovers, 10 points for Florida State. No, you've got people spoiled when you describe 4.8 yards per carry as pedestrian, but that's the high standard that Cook has set coming into the game tonight. Florida State kicking off to begin the second half. Georgia Tech will go on offense here. And it'll come out to the 25 yard line, first and 10. Let's go down to Quint. This is exactly where we've been in four out of our last five losses. That's the words of Paul Johnson as we talked as he was walking out of the tunnel. He said, this is where we've been. And the question is, can we finish this game? I also asked him about the touchdown run. He said they created a numbers advantage on the play side when Justin Thomas scooted off for that touchdown. They did something in their blocking scheme to give them an extra hat on the ball side. Johnson uh, a masterful guy at making critical adjustments at halftime. He always has a reaction to start the third quarter as to what the defense was doing prior. Yeah, that's something that Charles Kelly the defensive coordinator for Florida State is well aware of Marcus Marshall picks up about seven on first down. Remember Charles Kelly worked for Paul Johnson for several years here at Georgia Tech. There he is on the sidelines. Yeah, and he, he knows that Johnson makes the second half adjustments and remember in the first half it was the pitch it was the third option on the triple option that that hurt Florida State at times not the inside run by the B back the fullback. Second and three. Marshall had 150 yards last week. They gave it to him. First man through. Nothing doing. Maybe got a yard. It'll set up a third down and two. And Florida State has had a long time to study. They got here on Thursday, Rod. A little interesting wrinkle, right? You know, I'm not certain that it isn't a real advantage that helps Florida State. You know, they have this streak of 28 conference wins. They arrive on a Thursday. That's an extra day to be in the opponent's town and get acclimated and get rested get a good night of sleep on Thursday night. I think that probably helps them. Georgia Tech meanwhile two of six on third downs. And this will be a conversion. Nice spirited run by Isaiah Willis to pick up the first down again of a bunch there. Jalen Ramsey finally making the tackle to stop the game to five. No option there. That's just an old fashioned toss play to the outside to pick up the first down. Now it's worth seeing whether they go back to the triple option or do they start mixing in that counter that trap play that they used occasionally as a change up. Thomas looking over at Johnson on the sideline. Give us to Marshall. Picks up a couple yards inside. That's a two yard gain. Lawrence Stample making the stop on the play. So going back to Florida State getting here a day early. Overall, uh, it's a bit of a different approach in the big picture of college football, right? Most schools travel on Friday, yeah. arrive on Friday. It's just not in their budget, but Jimbo really believes you get in early, it helps you get acclimated. They take care of their academic advising on Friday right. and have kids study, but They've got two nights to get settled here and they he thinks it really works for them. And we were going through our interviews on Friday with them. We saw a bunch of players in study hall. One of their laptops. And Justin Thomas stopped up about four Thomas yards short of the first down by Jacob Pugh. 
picked up six. Remember, Florida State looking for its 29th consecutive conference win. Second well, longest streak in ACC history. When you have an athletic program that has been as successful as Florida State, you've got a big budget. You can you can choose to spend that money for the extra yeah. night, the hotel, the food, and the like. Yeah, they've got some bells and whistles in their program. Third and four. Marshall in the backfield. The toss into the boundary. And a first down picked up by Clinton Lynch. Got a nice block on the edge from Isaiah Willis. And a nine yard gain for the first. first and, ten, Georgia Tech. and Pugh hobbling off the field. From the 46. Thomas kept it, put it on spin cycle, and makes it down to the 40 yard line. Picked up six on the play. Stopped by DeMarcus Christmas. They've run it seven times in a row on this drive, the opening one of the third quarter. Georgia Tech. Thomas initially committed to Alabama coming out of high school. He's an Alabama resident out of Prattsville. Play clock down to five. Looked like they had a bust in the backfield. And this is what happens when you have a bust against Florida State. No mercy shown. And a flag down at the 43 yard line may have been a face mask. Roderick Hoskins had a hold of that face mask. Personal foul, face mask, defense. First down, down penalty. Down. And they would have had a loss on that Rod. Yeah that, that's a first down saving play. That drive first might have stalled. Down. Now I ask you this Jonesy. Do you even consider going back to your passing attack if you're Georgia Tech given the two picks. You see that that was an easy call on Hoskins 18. And I'm not sure how much I trust Justin Thomas at this point to throw yeah. it. Couple picks and I think you're in four down territory. I, I think you keep running. I think you stay away from the option pass down here. First and 10, they give it to Marshall over the top down to the 23. So, when is that time where you catch the DBs and the defense picking daisies, so to speak, back there? Yeah, you, after nine straight runs. Yeah, now. exactly. You start to not pay attention, but when you get this close to the end zone, I think those daisies are forgotten. You're, you're kind of like, you're honed in right now. You're saying, okay, let me see what's going to happen down here. So, I don't think his defensive backs are uh, sweeping out there right now. Second and ten. Marshall stopped up. They give it to the dive man, to Marcus Christmas. Well read. Whatever games they're playing on the interior are working. You know, on, right? that's a good point. They, Florida State has changed their front there so that the initial read that Thomas is looking for is not the right read. Instead of it being the defensive end that he's trying to read to see if he's going to take the fullback or not, they've switched. They've got the linebacker stepping in and that end playing out. And so I think that's why he's giving it to the wrong guy there. Right now it looks like that Florida State defense is playing chess and Paul Johnson playing checkers. Third and eight. Tenth play of the drive coming up. And with the play clock out. winding down, Georgia Tech calls timeout. Every play's been a run so far on this drive. Third and long coming up next. I've seen tricycle races, so what's this? <laughs> Rod, tell us about the reads now on the interior. Well, we talked about it before, Jonesy. Here is the dive read for Thomas. He's looking there to decide whether to give or keep. So he looks here, freeze. So he says that's an out motion, but he's not paying attention. He doesn't realize that the defensive line has slanted to take the dive. Mm. 
so he makes the bad read there. Now the question is, how does Georgia Tech adjust here? I don't think they'll throw the football. They haven't had enough success. So that's a specific change by Charles Kelly, the defensive Absolutely. coordinator. Right? They're going to pass. Thomas incomplete, intended for Ricky June, broken up and almost intercepted by Derwin James. Fourth and eight in the field goal unit coming in for Georgia Tech. I'm surprised that they threw it on third down. I, I just didn't think they were having an, enough success. They've had a tough uh, couple of picks. I thought they'd try and go back to their counter or their triple option. But now a field goal, if they make this, Butker could bring them within three. From 40 yards out, Butker. Gets it right inside that left upright to cut the margin to three. Timeout on the field when we come back. Dalvin Cook, Dade County's finest, going back to work. Dalvin Cook's off and running. Cook is the real deal. Breaking tackles, there he goes. Freak show. 94. 74. 72 yards. As good as any running back in the country. Now to see if you've won all winners and alternate winners. Welcome back everyone to Georgia Tech homecoming weekend. Yellow Jackets trying to snap a five game losing streak. And Florida State looking to achieve history with their 29th consecutive conference win. But this game like many so far this year a little bit more competitive than anticipated. But remember last week against Louisville Seminoles able to break the game open with five straight touchdowns on five consecutive possessions in the second half. This will be their first possession of the third quarter down to Quint for more on Cook. Yeah this is a point in the game where you worry about the hamstring of Dalvin Cook three weeks in a row that left hamstring has flared up because he's been sedentary 20 minute halftime and about a seven minute Georgia Tech drive you worry about his body temperature dropping and that hamstring getting tight. One other thing I was told from their strength and conditioning staff when he runs down low with body lean he's fine the pressure's on his quads it's in these games when he stands up in the open field and accelerates that it puts more pressure on that hamstring. Don't you do that Quint don't hey, you Quint. pull anything down there. Don't, don't leave that hamstring on the sideline there Quint. <laughs> Good job. First and ten. Olsen surveying the field and Cook, a good receiver out of the backfield, makes the reception. And uh, no doubt that his grandma, who helped raise him, Miss Betty, watching down there in Miami, and sweating out the fact that that hamstring is trying to hold up. Well, sweat is exactly what they want him to get now. They want to get him lathered up and get him loose and get him some touches early in this third quarter. Because uh, Q's right, you know it's been a long time, and you just can't give him one touch here and then wait another eight nine minutes. You've got to get him going. Second and seven. Whitfield in motion. Wilson throws a dart complete to Bobo Wilson, and Wilson throws Wilson that first down. He's going to pick it up. And a nice Wilson. looking throw. Wilson getting open. Well, I'll ask you and Quint both. We've seen Fournette and Booker the last couple of weeks cook tonight. How do you rate them? Ooh. Tell you what, there's there's still a long way to go in this game. I'm gonna reserve judgment. Mm. Okay. Because all three of those guys hit home runs late in the games that we saw. Booker broke loose late last week in Utah when we saw him, and uh, Fournette did the same at LSU. Pass complete to Whitfield and hit immediately. That's going to be a loss. One to, did I totally bail out and yeah, stay on the fence? Yeah, that's okay. But I, I, Thank I, will, you. I will too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still think that there is a significant lead for Fournette. And he's a different kind of runner than Cook. Cook yeah. is a guy who can get something for you laterally. He probably catches more balls out of the backfield. But when you're talking pure, straight-ahead power and speed, that's Fournette. This guy is close with that, but he's got that lateral movement that is quite unique. Second and 11. Golson has made eight of his last 11. Make that nine of 12 complete out to the 40 yard line. Ryan Izzo making the catch. And, you know, back to Cook. His former linebackers coach at, well, the school where he played at Miami Central, the linebacker coach, one Luke Campbell, told me that he's got a younger brother. A freshman at Miami Central who's going to be better 
than Dalvin Cook. Oh, they're lining up now. <laughs> oh, the recruiters are lining up now. And the stands are, fans are standing up on this third down. Blitz coming. Bolson threads the needle, and it's incomplete. At the 48-yard line, tried to find Rudolph. And there was some pressure coming from Georgia Tech that time. So Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator, dialed up a little bit heat rod. Here you see Jimbo right at him. Now, Jimbo believes when you have a good relationship, you have trust with your quarterback, you can coach him hard. Yeah, you saw a little pat on the backside there, too. Yeah. yeah. And you saw him grab by the shoulder pad. Because they trust each other. He knows he can be tough on it. Well, Jameis Winston knows how that feels. Punt down to the 13 yard line to Jamal Golden. Winston was on the sidelines charting plays for Golston and Jimbo last week. Back after this. ESPN College Football brought to you by AT&T, mobilizing your world. And Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Look at the Nissan Heisman House, a free game fan experience that celebrates college football's most prestigious award. It's on site here at Georgia Tech today, and here's a look at our Heisman hopefuls, Rod. What do you make of Dalvin's performance tonight and how he stacks up against I, the rest? I think he's still in the hunt there, and he's playing well. Game's not over, and McCaffrey's played his way into this thing. And a big night against UCLA as the give is to Marcus Marshall. How do you feel about the fact that Georgia Tech down three here has controlled the ball most of the night at the time of possession. Uh, 22 07 for Georgia Tech and 17 10 for Florida State. Paul Johnson's team has had a lot of near misses. One more symbolic than last week losing to Pitt on a long 56 yard field goal. Here's Campbell. Marshall in the open field. Marcus Marshall gashes them out to the 40 yard line, a 23 yard pickup. This is a trap. This is an adjustment. Just watch as you see inside here a good trap block by number 78. Braun, the left guard in there, that trap influenced Georgia, uh, Florida State to send their men across the line of scrimmage, trapped them, and got a big run out of it. First and ten out to near the 40. Marshall again picks up about two as we go back to Chris in the studio. Brought down by Niall Lawrence Stemple. Three yard gain brings up second down and seven. Ball on the jacket 43 yard line. Right back here at second and seven. Marcus Allen in the ball again. Number 24 for Georgia Tech. With a name like that at running back, uh, you better have some skills. Absolutely. Toss though is to Clinton Lynch. Picks up a first down and then some. Still on his feet. Lynch lunging. They're going to mark it about the 41. Great effort. Well, Jones, the option football means cut blocking and a good cut block. Help get Lynch to the edge. I just want you to keep your eyes out here to the side. Watch what happens out of outside. You'll see a cut block show up. There's Ramsey eight cut and put on the ground with a cut block from one of the backs. That is what allows you to get to the perimeter. It's down in ten. Get the first man through Marcus Allen. Let's get back to the cut block. Marcus Why a cut block as opposed to a more conventional block where you stay with your man and drive them? You no, know, guys can't tackle if they're on the ground. They, they can't get in the way. And they can't keep their eyes up and look at where the ball is and where the ball carry is. They got to look at what you're doing to cut them. And if you don't pay attention to that, you will be ripped to shreds. Got them thinking a little bit more. Yep. Second down and seven. the 
tackles. It's Marcus Allen putting them in field goal range down to Quint. Rod, you're a lawyer. I want to present some more vis visible <laughs> evidence of cut blocking. Take a look at the thigh pads, the pants of all these Georgia Tech linemen and their A backs. Grass Stain City. Their equipment manager better have a lot of bleach ready after this game. It's from diving on the ground, play after play. Look how green their pants are. Counselor, strong argument. I'm persuaded. If the pants fit, you must. Uh, oh, no, no. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Third and four. Last time they had a third down, they threw it. Two on the play oh, clock. Man. Here comes the timeout. They got a tall oh, one. That's going to hurt them. That is wow. going to hurt them. That is the second time second. they've oh, blown time a timeout out, because they couldn't get a playoff. Georgia Tech looking at a third down and four, and a chance to take their first lead of the ball game against number nine, Florida State. And now let's take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Well, let's wait on that. I but can tell you about rankings as far as this game goes. You're Florida State. You're sitting at number nine. Right. You're in the hunt. You cannot afford to lose this ball game. You're you're thinking about a showdown with Clemson in a couple of weeks and the ACC is going to have an issue if their champion does not remain undefeated and is the issue being what specifically well the ACC generally not as highly regarded as other conferences uh -huh. and the weak schedules non conference now the only other conference that has a similar a problem in non conference is the Big 12 the Northwestern Mutual college football rankings third and four for the Yellow Jackets right up the middle for the first down it's Marcus Allen Marcus Allen and Paul Johnson has deciphered something on the interior again and now it seems like it's time for Charles Kelly to make another adjustment Rod there there are only many so many clubs in your bag okay you know <laughs> There are only so many ways that you can adjust your players on that read. Since the first quarter, 27 of the last 31 plays have been runs by Georgia Tech. Allen got it again. This time they were sitting on it and waiting for him. Allen with the carry. Nadi. Making the stop, a gain of one on the play. Well, those two 300 pounders inside, Lauren Stample, 99, and Naughty, 91, when, when they have it going, they make it difficult to allow Kelly to change things up on the reads for the quarterback and the pitch. But those two big tackles inside, if they're disruptive, that's a problem for Georgia Tech. Second down and nine. The Yellow Jackets driving. I'm winding down in the third. A little reverse pivot by Thomas and nowhere to go. A loss of two on the play. A third and long coming up now. That's going to be the end of the third quarter of play with Paul Johnson's team looking to snap its five game losing streak. And Florida State looking for its 29th consecutive win against the conference opponent. What are those streaks going to end? Welcome back. If you want to look at our game summary, Dalvin Cook, 13 rushes in the ball game. Well, you, you know why? He only has 13 rushes. That's what he had at halftime. Wow. He didn't touch the ball in the third quarter because Georgia Tech played keep away. Yellow Jackets have been running the ball down Florida State's throat. Thomas can't take a sack, and that's going to put them out of field goal range. Or the very worst on the long fringes of it, Josh Sweat with the sack. Josh Sweat. Jonesy, I, I don't get it. I really don't get it. Their passing attack has been non existent tonight. I, I, I thought all along they'd be better off on third down, taking their shot, running their option. And if you got close enough, you know, go for it on fourth down or kick a field goal. But this passing attack tonight, 
not good. Boy, Paul Johnson all over, all up in his quarterback's grill. As many completions as they have picks tonight. Sweat with the sack there. He also had the interception earlier tonight. And the play clock ran down. I'm I'm sorry, play but game. that's All knowing your team and how it's playing. Four and down. you know you're on the edge of the field goal range, a chance to tie it. You can't take a drop back pass. Yeah. You're an option team. You're struggling to throw the football. You can't do that now. W was he thinking there was an element of surprise there? Uh, or? Yeah, and he's mad at his quarterback, but if I were the coach, I'd be mad at myself. Don't put him in that position. Well, they move it back a few yards, and here's the punt and end over end one that comes down at the 10 yard line. Rodwell gets it to Wilson, and uh, a late flag, a flag on the field at the 17 yard line near side of the field. There was some action right at or after the whistle. Boy Georgia Tech really had a great opportunity there. It was moving the ball and then a couple of negative plays took them out of field goal range. Stunted that promising drive and now this. Personal foul. Against Georgia Tech. Number eight. 15 yards. Penalty is against Georgia Tech. Well, Jonesy, it, it's a matter of thinking team and not being selfish and personal. Time to let this go because your team has a chance to pull an upset. Georgia Tech, uh uh, penalized. Be on the lookout for the Taco Bell student section and passionate fans like these at games all season long. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell and learn how you can get to the college football playoff. Back under the lights, first down and 10 from the 26 for the Seminoles with a tenuous three-point lead after that unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, a rather debatable one perhaps against the Yellow Jackets. <laughs> Dalvin <laughs> Cook, it was debatable, you're Rob. You're still mad about I that. I know you're a lawyer, but that was debatable. <laughs> All I'm saying is you can't take that chance. You know, you can't try to retaliate in a three-point game in the fourth quarter. And if the official flags you for it, bad on you. Yeah, I, I just saw the Florida State player try to ride him. Yeah, you're right, absolutely. Dalvin Cook. Well, just had his first rush of the second half. Georgia Tech had the ball for over 12 minutes in the third quarter. This touch to Freddie Stevenson stopped up a couple of yards short of the first down. He picked up five on the reception. Well, Here's a look at Cook on the last play. Yeah, well, it's Cook's time, fourth quarter, but watch the end of this. It's like he kind of grabbed his hamstring like, yeah, is that a little bit of a problem? Mm. We've been watching it all night. He initially injured that hamstring back in the game against Wake Forest. He hasn't had any rushes, didn't have any in the third quarter. Georgia Tech effectively playing keep away in the third period. Florida State one of six on third downs, and they're going to call a timeout here. Yeah, facing Jimbo a third Fisher, and two. Fisher came on the field again to get that timeout called. Mm. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. And Miller Lite, back in its original bottle, but not for long. It's Miller time. NFL Insider Sunday edition, 10 a.m. Eastern time at 11. It's NFL Countdown with Boomer and the gang. It all starts at 10 on ESPN. Jones, Third and this, two. This is a run formation. I formation is heavy run for Florida State. And if you're Jimbo Fisher, you've got to trust number four, Dalvin Cook. Little play action. Golson open. Great call. First down, Seminoles to Ryan Izzo. What a nice fourth quarter adjustment for Jimbo Fisher. That I formation in the past has been 100% run. They changed that tendency in the fourth quarter tonight and come up with a big tight end pass reception by Izzo. 
and all coaches try to save something for mm. the fourth quarter both on offense and defense. First and ten. Looked like a bust in the backfield. Golson close to getting back to a line of scrimmage. Back to Chris in the studio. Golson with the quarterback keeper. One yard loss on the play brings up second down and 11. Ball on the 46 yard line. All right, back here, second and 11. Golson complete to Whitfield, and Whitfield with a first down, just shy of the 30 yard line, a 15 yard gain. Golston came into the night, had not thrown an interception, still perfect in that category this year. You know, you asked earlier, who do you trust? And you said Cook. Well, Jimbo's trusting that man right mm. now, Golson. This fourth quarter, he's turned to Golson to throw it, run it, picked up a first down now. Telling me basically those passionate words they exchanged on the sidelines in the third quarter might have inspired his quarterback, or at least gotten them on the same page. Escaping harm, Golson. Nice little pump fake. And runs down to the 22 yard line so showing a little elusiveness getting his uh, Dalvin Cook on that time seven yard gain. Look at the difference you you spoke about the exchange they had earlier and now you see eye to eye you see that there is some trust between them. Golson seems perfectly fine with everything that's gone on with he and Jimbo the pats on the back sometimes the you know grab the shoulder pad hey listen yeah. to me. Jimbo Fisher knows how to handle quarterbacks. He chronicled it a moment ago. He said seven of his last eight. And Cook down to the 22. There's a flag down on the near side of the field, though. Tackle made by Brant Mitchell. The 10 20 to go. Florida State with a slim three point advantage. We have Damon Smith injured on the play. Offsides, defense, number 93. Five yard penalty. First down. Well, That's going to go against Simmons. Yes, Smith has been banged up a little mm. bit. He was banged up coming into the game. He was going to try and play. You see, he got a shot. It looked from from behind. Yeah, a little whiplash. Now, this defense, interesting, Rod. Not a lot of takeaways this year for the Yellow Jackets defensively. In stark comparison and contrast to last year, where they had a 26% takeaway ratio last year that was number yeah. one in FBS and yeah. defensive coordinator Ted Roof telling us that that's just the nature of football yeah, sometimes. Happens. Well what he can take credit for and his players can is that they've been good tonight in limiting big plays. I mean the longest run for Cook yeah. is 17 yards. You, they, they've taken away the big play and that's huge against a team that's as, you play, as explosive as Florida State. You play defense. Do you try and make it happen sometimes a little too much or how do you make it? The turnovers happen. Absolutely. You, if you get a chance to, you know, tackle the football, rip it out, you try and do that. Now, when you play more zone than you do man coverage, you got a better chance of getting an interception. It's hard to pick off a ball in man coverage. First and ten. Wilson out of the shotgun. Given time. Flag thrown. The pass incomplete to Cook at the 22. Let's see what this flag is about at the 25-yard line, though. Defended by number 20, Lawrence Austin. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Defense number 96. After this, automatic first down. That's against Well, it's right in front of you. Hard to miss that. Gotsis 96, 6'5", 288. And to the face. They caught that one easily. He's one of their leaders up front. Incredible athlete at his size, just 6% body fat. One of their most dynamic guys. First and goal for the Seminoles. There's the eye formation. They broke that tendency by throwing last time, but it's generally their heavy run formation. Cook dotting the eye. There's the stretch zone play. Gets to the edge. Cook brought down at about the three. Actually, 
the four yard line. It looks like uh, that was player down also for Georgia Tech. Yeah, PJ Davis. Five yard gain by Cook. Davis is another player who we thought might not play tonight. He was a little banged up coming into the, the game. Yeah, they had a bunch of guys. I mean, this has been a year where, although they returned some players on defense, it hasn't quite worked out the way that Ted Roof and Paul Johnson would have wanted it to and uh, had some injuries along the way. As a team, remember, if you're just joining us, they made it to the ACC championship game last year. Well, and, and to that point, you know, two out of the last three years they've been there, and this is a team many people expected to contend for the yeah. ACC championship. And right now, their 18-year streak of bowl games is in jeopardy. Let's go down to Quint. Guys, it'll be interesting to see what Florida State comes up with. They have struggled in the red zone in the Miami game. It was a big struggle tonight. They've settled for field goals three times. One thing you notice from the sideline, they don't have really tall wide receivers for the most part. And that, is, that has been a little bit of an issue down around the goal line. You're right. Whitfield is 5'7". Wilson 5'10". Their, their biggest guy is Rudolph, who's 6'2". But they've struggled. 53% touchdown percentage coming into this ball game in the red zone, which is awful. Yeah, look at Saunders, but he's a tight end. And, uh, just a freshman. Flags. Off start, offense, number 74. Five yard penalty, second down. And that's exactly what happened all too frequently for Jimbo Fisher last week in the Louisville game. He's got a young offensive line. He talked to us about it yesterday. He said, hey, I don't know why some of these guys jump. A little anxiety, you know, uh, just not the maturity of it. And these things happen. Well, 53% in the red zone won't get it done. Second and goal, they move it back. Golson, a little counter step. Great move, Golson, though. Drilled and brought down at about the five yard line by Gotsis. Atoning for that earlier error, a four yard gain by Golson, and another Georgia Tech player coming up limping and shaken up. It's A.J. Gray this time, a true freshman out of Sandersville, Georgia. Well, Gray was in for Smith. Wow. And they, they are losing guys on the back end. Just not good for them at all. Big drive for Florida State because if they settle for a field goal, it's still just a one possession game. As Gray is being tended to by the athletic training staff. A third and goal coming up for the Seminoles. It's been that kind of season, a litany of injuries for Paul Johnson and Georgia Tech. Full time out. We're going to take a time out and come right back. Celebrating its 11th year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets Allstate making contributions to participating in university sc general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. To date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. Now, Jones, the A.J. Gray was kicked in the back, the lower right side of his back, and came off the field. Big third down now for Florida State and Georgia Tech. Took the side Golson. Third and goal. And a flag. Again. All start offense. Number 77. Five yard penalty. Like I said, Third this down. is a remix of last week against Louisville offensively on the line. Well, and if Georgia Tech can get a hold here to a field goal, that's a one possession game. And keep in mind, Florida State could not get Georgia Tech off the field in the third quarter. They could conceivably chew up eight minutes yeah. on the clock themselves. Wow. They had it for 12 minutes in the third quarter. This time they empty it out. Five receivers. Golson into the end zone. Popped up. Juggled. Intercepted. Jamal Golden with a golden pick. It's the first pick of the year for Florida State. That ball was tipped up in the air by Austin as Golson tried to thread the needle and get the touchdown.
It had to come sometime. This Watch is the first Austin. interception. 20. He gets his left hand in there, knocks the ball in the air, and it looks like it bounced off of, off of the knee mm. of Rudolph. And Golden is there for the ricochet. The first pick for Everett Golson this season. And at a terrible time yes. for Florida State. Takes points off the board. I think he might have been telling his center he was looked like he was waiting for the snap a little bit longer than he wanted. Regardless, a little over eight minutes to go. And here comes Justin Thomas keeping it for the first down. Out to the 35 yard line, a 15 yard gain. And Bobby Dodd Stadium is alive. Thomas keeps it, and they crash down on him at the 35 yard line. That was Naughty making the stop on the play. You know, in a season when some of the balls have bounced the wrong way and Lady Luck hasn't exactly been on their side, that ball was juggled and caught by Georgia Tech. They finally literally caught a break. And number nine is in trouble, Florida State. On second and ten. They gave it to the first guy through, Marcus Marshall, Marshall out near the 40 yard line. It'll be third down. Gained about five. And this is the dangerous down for Georgia Tech. They've proven all night throwing on third and five and plus is a problem for them. Will they go to it here? I I've felt all along that they just needed to. Live and die with their option instead of throwing on third down. It just hasn't worked out tonight. Two Mar picks already. Marshall in the backfield. He's the closest they've got to a game breaker there. They run the toss to Willis. And you're not going to outrun Florida State to the edge like that. Good tackle by Elliott. Willis is a carry. How about that play? Wow. Elliott smelled it completely, defeated the blocker. He makes this play by himself. Watch the top of the screen, 14, takes on the block, gets his shoulder lower, blows through it, and makes the tackle. That goes on the highlight oh, clip, right? Oh, <laughs> absolutely. That is huge. And the punt from Rodwell. Fair catch called at the 21 yard line by Jesus, a.k.a. Bobo Wilson, on the 44 yard punt. No return. He's a little shaken up. Florida State football when we come back. Hey, if you want to watch college football on the go, just download the Watch ESPN app or go to watchespn.com. Catch everything live. Like we saw that Michigan, Michigan State ending oh. last week in Salt Lake City. Thank while goodness, if we hadn't yeah. had the app, we would have <laughs> missed that. Yeah. First and ten for the Seminoles in the wake of Everett Golson's first interception thrown this year. On the last drive, flags down. The Seminole offensive line has had some issues on the last drive with penalties and false starts. Cook on the carry, meanwhile. Illegal formation against the offense. High hit in the backfield. Five yard penalty. First down. Boy, there have been an inordinate amount of self inflicted wounds by Jimbo Fisher's team here in the fourth quarter. Rock. Young team, still learning, still growing. And you, you hope if you're a Florida State fan, you can play through this and still not have it cost you a game in your number nine ranking. But that is still to be determined tonight. Florida State trying to stay undefeated on the season. Golson's pass dropped by Ryan Izzo. A little bit behind him, but hit him in the hands. Sets up second and long. Let's go back to what you talked about. Who do you trust? We have youngsters. Izzo's a redshirt freshman. Missed that one. 
They tried going into the end zone before youngsters. Now do you go back to the old guy that you trust the sophomore who's been through the wars already and cook. Got to give him a shot here. Hasn't had a lot of touches in the second half. They're going to pass it to the edge. That's Whitfield with that sprinter speed and I mean sprinter speed. He has a personal best of 10.21 in the 100 meters. That's world class. Meanwhile tonight. A look at the numbers for Dalvin Cook. Give credit to that Georgia Tech defense. And offense holding on to the ball. Yeah right? yeah that third quarter stands out. 12 minutes and 15 seconds. Florida State stood on the sidelines and watched Georgia Tech with the football in the third quarter. Cook in the backfield beside Bolson on third and three. They fumble it. The play blows up and fourth down coming up. Freeman in there to pressure Golson for insurance. And they're going to ask whether it was grounding or not. There's a flag down. That's a grounding. He's off his middle field. Fourth down. Well, Jones, you remember for grounding or to avoid grounding, you have to get outside the tackle box, and that ball has to get beyond the line of scrimmage. I don't think it got beyond the line of scrimmage. Yeah. It's fourth down. Fourth down coming up. Didn't look like he was expecting the snap. Yeah, there was a missed time snap there. Not on the same page. And now all of a sudden, you only took a minute off the clock, and Georgia Tech will get the ball back. Beatty punting from his own goal line. They came after him, and he responds with a bullet all the way back to the 33. Golden brought down at the 36 yard line a three yard return after a fantastic 52 yard clutch punt. Well tonight at 1030 on ESPN we've got Washington and number 10 Stanford in a Pac-12 tilt. Kevin Hogan and Christian McCaffrey leading the Cardinal against the Huskies in Stanford. And McCaffrey broke Tony Ger Toby Gerhardt's a single game rushing record with 243 last yeah, game. Yeah, he'll, he'll be a marked man tonight. And the last time we saw Washington, they were knocking off USC. Yeah. USC in a battle tonight against Utah. First and ten. Georgia Tech with a chance here with 425 to go to snap that five-game losing streak. Play action. Thomas has a man. Incomplete. Great hit on Clinton Lynch to jar the ball loose. That's what a freshman. stick by Derwin James. That is the freshman we talked about earlier. Six foot three, 212 pounds. He was a highly rated recruit coming out of high school. Everybody mm. wanted him, chose Florida State, and he has become a big time player back there. And they needed him in light of the injuries they've had in the secondary. That's why you need five star recruits. <laughs> Got that right. They make plays. Second and ten. The give is to Marshall, the first man through on that triple option. What kind of grade would you give Florida State at this point handling that three card Monty shell game triple option? I think they've done point? a good job, you know, but for the 60 yard touchdown run by Thomas, they've pretty much kept it in check. Now, I, I think Georgia Tech. You might have two downs here. I don't know that they can kick the ball away mm. if they don't get this and get it back and get something done. Third down coming up. Thomas is two of eight passing on the night for 37 yards and a couple of picks. They run it. The toss a little bit late and well played defensively as Lance Davis is brought down for no gain on the play. Here's your dilemma Jonesy. You only have one timeout. Mm. You wasted two timeouts because you couldn't get to the line of scrimmage. You kick this ball away. Yeah. You probably get nothing. You get the ball. You don't get the ball back. You're an option team. I think you have to go here. This might be the game for Georgia Tech. Need to convert on fourth and five. Needing to get to the 47. They're going to throw. Thomas has a man open. First down. Brad Stewart with the biggest play of the night for Georgia Tech.
Florida State tipped the blitz. Thomas rolls away from it, and they work on the freshman, James. The guy who made the big hit earlier, they get him this time. He snuck up a little bit, and they got behind him. A 36-yard gain down to the 23-yard line. First and 10. One timeout remaining for Georgia Tech. A field goal ties it, and this is Marshall. Do you play it a little conservative here, or what do you do if you're Paul Johnson? Well, pardon the pun, but you have options. <laughs> you have options because you've got a field goal in your back pocket right now. You are an option running team. There's no reason to do anything crazy and throw the ball. Run your option. You can run your counter, but you can't lose yardage. You've got three points in your back pocket here. They cut. Derwin James perhaps napping on that last play. Was that the dandelion scenario? Did they catch him sleeping? <laughs> he got he was a little bit eager. <laughs> he came up to make a play and they got behind him. On second and nine. They toss it to the edge and run down well that time is Lance Davis by Demarcus Walker. Third down after the gain of two. Nose of the ball resting just shy of the 20 yard line. Florida State over the last couple of years, albeit a different cast this year, used to playing in close games like this. I'm not throwing it here, buddy. Third and seven? I'm uh, not throwing it. I got three points in my back pocket. I can't take a sack. I can't have a pick. Trust your option. Thomas only has three completions tonight, but the last one was vital. He keeps it. Well, you're right. They didn't try and throw it. He's pushed out of bounds. They're going to mark it at the 18. Josh Sweat was there to push him out, along with Jacob Pugh, a gain of two. Fourth down coming up. And in comes the field goal unit led by Harrison Butker. Butker tonight has already made a couple. Jonesy, we talked about it earlier. The fact that 18, I'm sorry, 28. Win streak for Florida State, yeah. an 18 game bowl streak on the line for Georgia Tech. Yeah. They won a postseason game. From 35, Fisher doesn't try to ice him and he drills it. The big play of the drive was that completion to Brad Stewart for 36 yards. This was the game saver. Yes, yeah, Stewart. Got behind the freshman James. Little wheel route. Ball dropped right in there. Good catch. And that set things up. You saw the wheel route there. James came flying up to try to make a play. Stewart just wheeled out behind him down the sideline. And a perfectly thrown ball by Thomas, who had been struggling all night in the passing of game, came up with a big one there. Let's flip the script now and talk about Florida State. Remember, they've got a real dangerous kickoff return man in Kermit Whitfield, who had that 100-yard kickoff return in the national title game against Auburn a couple of years ago. There he is, number eight. He, too, with world-class speed. I'm talking about 10.2 speed in the 100 meters. Now, do you kick it away from him? And if you don't, Florida State still with a little bit of time, 54 seconds, uh, yeah. two timeouts. I don't kick it to him. There you go, kick it out. This one will come out to the 25-yard line, Touchdown. first and 10 for Everett Golson, who had a dubious first tonight with his first interception thrown of the season. Well, after tonight's Pac-12 showdown, stick around for Sports Center at night, catch all the Highlights and news from a busy day in college football sports center at night kicking off right after Washington and Stanford on ESPN and streaming live on watch ESPN. Well, Jonesy or Florida State you've got two timeouts. You have a veteran quarterback a fifth year guy who transferred in he's played in the national championship game. You've trusted him tonight. You know your kicker can make about a 50 54 yard field goal. First and ten. Dalvin Cook going to pick up about two on the play, brought down by Adam Gotsis. You know, we should have expected this. Last five games in this series have been decided by a total 
That's a total of 17 points. Averages out to about a field goal. Including that ACC championship yes. game last season. Uh, we got a player shaken up on the field. It's one of the Florida State offensive linemen, Kareem R. He just came back. He sure did. The young offensive lineman still establishing a little bit of chemistry out there. He's one of the upperclassmen. Oh, he got him, rolled up yeah, on. Yeah, to the right of your screen, he gets rolled up on on that left leg. That's really, really sad to see. He yeah. just got back to the lineup tonight. Second down and eight coming up now for Florida State. 41 seconds to go. Their perfect undefeated record at stake right now in peril. And they call a timeout. So they give it to Dalvin Cook on first down and pick up a couple of yards. You, you know, you've got time. 41 seconds. Right. You know that if you get to what is, we need about the 37 yard line if you're Florida State, that's where you got to get to to have a reasonable shot at a field goal. Given the speed you have on the outside, that's not the issue. It's about being smart with the football and using that timeout when you need to. Lovetti, number 55 in on the offensive line, and they find a gaping hole for the first down beyond the 35 to the 36 with 36 for, seconds to go. They playing for overtime? You know what? Cook is a home run hitter. So I say no. I mean, that, that's a good call, right? Yeah, well, you know, you need, you're going to need about a 30 yard pass here sooner or later to have a shot, and you got the one timeout. Out of the shotgun, Golson fires it low and incomplete behind Whitfield. Second and 10 with 27 seconds to go. Second down and 10, ball on the 36. You need 25 yards. Roberto Aguayo has a career long of 53 as he watches from the sidelines. Will he get an opportunity? That's the question that begs. On second and 10. Olsen dumps it to Cook. Got a couple blocks, still on his feet. And close to range with 20 seconds to go at the 42. Clock will stop with the first down, but you can clock it now and stop it and then, and then save your timeout. So they spike it, as you said, Rod. And look, you see they're about five yards short of field goal range. Mind you, Jimbo Fisher said that Aguayo can knock one through from 60. Yeah, but I think what you can do here, you've got enough time. You've got a timeout. You need another six or seven yards to actually feel somewhat comfortable at your kicker. Feels good about it. You know he's made a 53 yarder. Florida State looking for their 29th consecutive conference win to tie a record. Looking to stay unbeaten and improve to 7-0. And, and you know, be a player in the college football playoff. You have the timeout. You can use the entire field here. And Georgia Tech going to call a timeout. Georgia Tech, third and final timeout. 30 well, seconds timeout. Wants to talk things over. Let's go downstairs to Quint. Yeah, more on Aguayo. They're ultra reliable field goal kicker. He has never missed a fourth quarter kick in his career between PATs and field goals, about 59 kicks. Spring game, he hit a 63-yarder. Coach told us, as you said, he's good from 64 to 65. Now, I saw him hit from 52 in this direction in warm-up. I also saw him push the ball right twice from 50. So, you know, any yardage here is, is a big plus. Yeah, you know, Quint, those numbers in the fourth quarter, that spells clutch. Yeah, well, this would be a 60-yarder yeah. from right here. And if I'm a defensive back right now, I'm not giving him the five, seven, eight-yard catch. If they want to take the chance and throw it deep, I'll make that, I'll take that gamble right now. But I'm not giving up a seven, eight-yard catch. You don't want to take a sack if you're Golson and a flag, an egregious pejorative penalty against Florida State. 
Incredibly, that is the, I'm counting four, Rod, on that offensive line here in the fourth period alone. Just anxiety. It is a young offensive line. They have eight freshmen and sophomores that they play up front. Just youngsters. Still 16 seconds on the clock. No time expired. Golson fires. And they get it down to the 38-yard line. Wilson with the catch. Wilson's Ten seconds to go. The and they burn Wilson. a timeout. From here. 55, 56. Yep. 38-17. Yeah, it's a 55-yarder. Within his range. Do you, do you run one more play here no. and then trot him out? No. It's too risky. Think about this. If you run a play and you don't get out of bounds, you got a problem. You, you, you won't even get the attempt. Right now, you know you have an attempt. Now, this tells you something about how much Fisher trusts Golson. If he runs a play here, uh -huh. he really truly believes that Golson will quickly make that decision and get rid of the ball and not take a sack. What kind of play fits that profile? It can what only be, quick? it's got to be a sideline. Got to be an out. Okay. You got to get rid of it quickly. Let's see what they run. If you get a first down, there's no guarantee you can actually get the clock stopped and get your field on the team. Got to get down, right? Yeah. You got to assume that his receivers got that message too. On third and six, Bolson throws to the sideline, incomplete. So now, Aguayo will presumably get his opportunity. Rudolph. The intended receiver it appeared to hit him in the hands and a look at Aguayo Roberto Aguayo the 6 1 junior has never missed a fourth quarter kick. This will be a 56 yarder. His career long is from 53 from the left hash to remain unbeaten and perhaps a player in the college football playoff and the 29th consecutive conference win. Blocked, snuffed, rubbed out, erased. And Georgia Tech with an opportunity. Austin still on his feet. One man, you can't believe what just happened. What a time to be alive. Austin recovered the loose block and scampered, bolted, escaped, eluded every Seminole on the pitch. 78 yards for the winning touchdown. When you think you've seen it all, you really haven't. Let's go downstairs to Quint with Coach. Coach, how do you best explain that last play? Well, it was our turn. We've had so many this year that have gone the other way. I'm just so proud of our guys. They fought and fought and fought. We made a lot of mistakes, but we fought the whole game and came back and found a way. What was the mindset of the team? You lose five straight. This game starts kind of going bad late. It's just a great opportunity. You've got a top 10 team in your house. Go out and have some fun and play hard, and our guys did that. What do you think made the difference in the fourth quarter? I don't know. Our whole team played well. Defensively, we, we played the run so much better. And what about this scene, Coach? What's this like for you? That's what it's all about. That's college football. Congratulations. Thanks, Quint. And Rod, 
It's like Coach Johnson said, it was our time. Previously, these kinds of scenes have gone the other way. And let's take one more look. This is the first fourth quarter miss ever by Aguayo, the field goal kicker. Well, just start with the notion of it being a heads up play that the Georgia Tech players were all in and just didn't celebrate. That ball gets picked up and brought back, but watch the block. And it's not just Austin returning. Watch the block down here by Chris Milton, number six, that really kind of opened up the way at the end. You got eight, nine Georgia Tech players all invested in that last play instead of just celebrating the block. They were trying to win the game. That's the mark of a winner. That's a team that's been frustrated by being two and five, looking at possibly not making a bowl game, and they knocked off the top ten team. Paul Johnson seemed to be just waving off Austin saying just get down or something <laughs> and then he kind of backed up. Did you see that. Yeah. No 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 keep going. No, so no, keep no. going. Yes. <laughs> wow. And what a scene here. At Bobby Dodge Stadium. An improbable implausible unbelievable ending in Florida State's first loss of the season. What did we say earlier when you shake a hornet's nest. Yeah. No telling who might get stung. And the Seminoles got stung tonight. What an ending. 22-16, Yellow Jackets win it against the Seminoles. Coming up next, it's College Football Scoreboard. For Rod Gilmore and Quint Kessenick, I'm Mark Jones. Folks, thanks for watching. As I said earlier a moment ago, what a time to be alive. Good night from Atlanta. <laughs>